Hi friends, let's continue our education on the topic of digestive tract. And today we are going to talk again about elevated bilirubin. But in this uh, video, we will talk about direct bilirubin. Keep in mind, in this presentation, I'm talking about liver and when liver enzymes such as ALT and AST will be normal. In previous lecture, 15 a.m., I talked again, I talked about elevated bilirubin and indirect bilirubin. So today is direct bilirubin, why it is elevated. So causes of elevated direct or also called conjugated bilirubin named here on this slide from most common to least common. So cholelithiasis is simply space for stones in the gallbladder or gallbladder um, and um, pancreas, pancreatitis, chronic or acute, pancreatic or biliary malignancy, ma malignancy is a fancy word for the tumor, portal adenopathy, biliary strictures formed in the abdomen when person had a surgery, and after the surgery, connective tissues get formed. As a result, those connective tissues can obstruct the flow of the bile. Primary sclerosis and cholangitis is also common, uh, HIV, uh, uh, cysts in any place where they can obstruct the flow of the bile, dysfunctional sphincter ori, parasites, and so on. At the end of this presentation, I will tell you about clinical case that I had personally with the parasites. Before we go to the blackboard, and I will explain you why direct bilirubin get elevated so you understand the concept. We need to talk, we need to say a few words about basic things such as a bilirubin is a pigment that comes from red blood cells being broken. Total bilirubin is sum of indirect and direct bilirubin. As you can see from this form, far, formula, if indirect or direct is elevated, obviously total bilirubin will be elevated. Indirect bilirubin means that bilirubin have not been conjugated yet. On the laboratory work, results will be presented as elevated, unconjugated bilirubin. Direct is conjugated, and the conjugation is enzymatic process that takes place in the liver and makes substances that are not water-soluble, water-soluble. So making like from this form, to that form as a result of conjugation substances that have not been uh, able body not, not able to excrete now become soluble and they will excrete through the liver easily and they also will go into the bloodstream and will get excreted through the kidneys now uh, let's go to the blackboard for the explanation You may remember this picture from the previous video. So this is digestive tract with the mouse. Food will go here, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, and the bile comes here in the small intestine and sphincter ori is located here. This is the large intestine and food comes out here. This bean, big green blob is the liver. So liver does conjugation. So this is the phase one. This is the phase two of conjugation. Conjugation. And broken red blood cells or chem comes here. Red blood cells. They get conjugated and excreted here to the gallbladder. And then bile from the gallbladder will come out here in the small intestine. So you remember the conditions when um, direct bilirubin will be elevated. So basically any obstruction of the flow of the bile at any level, either here within the liver or here in the gallbladder or here in the uh, bile ducts or even here this pancreas that could be enlarged uh, inflammation of the tumor. So anything that happened here below the conjugation, any obstruction will elevate total and direct bilirubin. So 
stones here in the common bile duct, stones here in the gallbladder, stones here in the bile duct, stones that, that get stuck here at the sphincter ori. In large pancreatic gland or tumor in this area and actually can press here and prevent bile from floating easily here into the small intestine. Sclerosing cholangitis where there is autoimmune damage by your own immune system is done into the gallbladder and bile ducts here. So the bile cannot flow easily, get accumulated here in the bile duct, in the gallbladder, and actually will come back. Will go back through the liver and will end, will end up so in the form of direct bilirubin in the bloodstream will cause elevated direct bilirubin as a result will elevate total bilirubin in the bloodstream. So let's go back to the PowerPoints. Here again, conditions for you to review when person has elevated total and direct or conjugated bilirubin. If you have any questions, guys, ask me there in um, below. A like, subscribe. But now I would like to tell you about clinical case that I had long ago as a physician in the, in the practice. At that time, I was in residency, my last year of residency, and I admitted patient with jaundice, right upper quadrant pain, uh, pale stool, and also patient look uh, a little bit emas too much emaciated for my taste. So I admitted patient into um, infectious department. As always, because person had a jaundice means that he had elevated bilirubin. So I ordered the work up for the liver and for the uh, gallbladder to eliminate uh, which bilirubin elevated direct or indirect and also the possible causes. And the work up for this kind of patients is a very simple. You order complete CBC with, different, with differential. You order kidney function liver panel to see ALT, AST, direct, indirect bilirubin, also ALP, alkaline phosphatase, and GGP, gamma glutamine transferase to see there is a, if there is damage to a biliary tract. Uh, I probably at that time ordered x-ray and gold standard to diagnose problems in the gallbladder ultrasound. I also ordered stool for ova and parasites and microscopy. What interested, interesting about that uh, case is that when the results started to come in, X-ray was inconclusive, was elevated uh, both direct and indirect bilirubin and also highly elevated GGP or gamma glutamine transferase means that the damage to gallbladder and bile ducts are there. On ultrasound, technician contacted us and described that they were seeing something unusual in the uh, gallbladder and gallbladder duct because gallbladder looked very uneven, um, convoluted, and also deleted, deleted in some parts. Also, there was seems like there was a major obstruction by the stool in the small intestine. However, when the results of stool microscopy and ova and parasites came in, that become the clinical diagnosis become more obvious. In the stool, there were numerous cysts of parasites and also particle of parasites. So on clinical rounds, we decided that the patient had numerous parasites in the digestive tract, and we started to treat as the drug been admitted. The health of the patient 
span out of control. Patient become um, started to have a high fever, a rush on the body that was assessed as a herxheim reaction, which means that um, bacteria or parasites started to fall apart and the toxins overwhelmed the patient's health. Also, he had a projectile vomiting several times. Couple days later, in the stool, this uh, was seen um, very unusual. Patient passed numerous parasites and often you see in the description in the medical books and pictures of the parasites that I never seen before in my life only on the pictures in the medical books but that time he passed huge lone parasites and the and the bowl of other types of the parasites that we never seen before so over time patient health get improved um, and, um, you know, he get out of my field of vision. So uh, that's an example when the parasites actually crawled into gallbladder and obstructed a flow of the bile out of gallbladder into the small intestine. So patient was basically impacted by the parasites in the small intestine in the gallbladder. Okay, guys, that's it for today. Thank you very much. It's Veronica Wax, naturopathic physician, happily retired. Bye-bye for now.